Hello and welcome to the Guna Talk. Back in with you guys for another show, for another episode, and for what could be the final episode of the managerial tactical breakdown series. Now, of course, we've done this series over a number of weeks, and now Arsenal have a coach, and we've managed to cover a plethora of different coaches, and not a single one of them was appointed by the club, uh, and that's probably pretty apt for how we do things around here. Um, but I am very, very happy to be able to do another tactical breakdown on another coach that we haven't looked at and being the coach that I wanted I'd say the most but I wanted Marco Rosa but in terms of the realistic appointments Mikel Arteta is certainly the guy that I wanted to see take the reins at Arsenal and I'm very very happy to be joined by Sam Lee from The Athletic who is going to break down all the ins and outs and insight about Mikel Arteta about what he's done at Man City and what impact he could have at the Arsenal so let's jump straight in and ask Sam the first question. Being an Arsenal fan myself, I saw plenty of the reaction. And as you know from some of the videos going across the channel over the last week or so, it's been fairly mixed. And it's had a mixed reaction in both myself and other fans too. So from a Man City perspective, what has been your initial reaction to this? I think Mikel Arteta's appointment at Arsenal is a positive one for Arsenal. I think it's a big loss to City. I can go into some of those reasons later on. But basically, I think Arteta is a really good coach. I think he's going to go in, you know, he, he's not just a coach, you know, he's got an edge to him. He, he, will, he will do things his own way. Um, he's helped Guardiola instill his philosophy in English football, you know, by getting Guardiola's ideas across to the players. Um, you know, those two think very quickly, even people who've been in the game for a long time, they can hear a conversation between the two of them and not really understand what's going on. They're on the same wavelength. Um, and Arteta can transmit those ideas very clearly to the players. He gets on very well with players, and I think that's pretty much what he's going to be able to do at Arsenal. Obviously, in terms of a playing style and changing Arsenal and what they may need at the moment, it's not going to be easy. But I do think, personally, there's there's a lot of talent in the Arsenal squad. I think it's lost its way a little bit, but I think a coach who will go in has a very clear idea of what he wants to do, um, is very clear in terms of his communication and is very clear in terms of his man management. It's exactly what that squad needs. So for that reason, I think Arteta is going to be a good appointment. Now, there's two schools of thought usually when thinking about Arteta. One which supports the Spaniard and the other which is against him. The latter being that he has no real first-team coaching experience. And that is a fair assumption. He has never taken charge of a first-team game of his own club. We know that he did it for Man City on a couple of occasions, but hasn't done it for himself. Now, when you look at what he's actually able to give, he has huge amounts of experience when it comes to learning from the master, Pep Guardiola. So I'm very interested, Sam, to know what sort of influence Pep has had on Mikel's time at Man City. I know there are question marks about a lack of experience, but I mean, that will only be seen in time, really. But in terms of what he's done so far at City, you know, he has been very important to Guardiola. And, you know, Guardiola's obviously the brains of the operation. He's done it at Barcelona, he's done it at Bayern Munich, he did it at Barcelona B before that. So, you know, they are his ideas. But, you know, in terms of that philosophy, that style of play, him and Arteta both share the, the same ideas. And that will be what Arteta wants to do at Arsenal. He will want to... Uh, instill that playing style in his new team he will, he will want to make it his own team um, and while he hasn't got experience of being the main man uh, he's very tactically astute um, he comes up with the little tweaks in games you know he will notice a particular weakness in the in the opponent and he will you know get the players in to say maybe we should try this maybe we should try that actually the first game of the season last season when Arsenal played City at the Emirates um, I think he noticed um, a little one-two on the left-hand side would be good to get in behind the byline and to cut, cut the ball back instead of putting it across the box. Um, City did that for the second goal they scored and Guardiola and Burrell, who's going to replace Arteta in Manchester, they celebrated with Arteta just to say, fair play, that was right. You know, he does that quite a lot. He's very astute. Like I say, coaching-wise, he's very good. Man management-wise, I do think he's good and that should stand him in good stead. Ultimately, we'll never know, but I do think it's worth finding out, basically, what Arteta is like as a manager and I do think given the situation Arsenal are, are in it, it makes sense and yeah of course given the fact he's worked with Pep Guardiola who is the best around in my opinion and in the opinion of many people um, I think that certainly adds a bit of extra credence to the appointment. So therefore what have been Mikel Arteta's huge coaching successes whilst being at Man City? We've all heard about Sane and Sterling attributing their success and progression to the Spaniard 
But has there been more than just the wing play? The thing with Arteta is he, he doesn't just work with players of a you know similar position to him. He doesn't just work with central midfielders. You know, he's helped City fill that gap at left back over the last two years with Benjamin Mendy being injured. You know, he was instrumental in retraining Fabian Dalf to the position. Um, Dalf could have left in 2017, but Arteta wanted to keep him around, kind of spotting that potential. Um, Zinchenko was also, you know, he he became the first choice left back earlier this year. That was with a lot of work from Arteta, but it's not just, you know, they're both central midfielders. Arteta can work with loads of other types of players as well. He's done a lot of work with the full backs. Um, he's done a lot of work with the forwards. Sane has spoken really highly of him um, from that documentary, the City documentary a couple of years ago when Sterling missed that sitter at Burnley. There was a conversation between Pep and Arteta and Sterling was talking about how much Arteta had advised him and how he missed that chance because he didn't do what Arteta needed him to do. The way he talks about the forwards and the change of pace needed and you know the way Messi works and the way Messi can do certain things, the fact that other players can't do them because they're not Messi, but if they can change the speed, they can change their direction, they can change their movements, there's certain things they can do. So there's a lot of stuff on the training ground that obviously Guardiola is the brains behind, but Arteta has got his own ideas. He thinks very clearly about it. Uh, he knows what he wants from the players. He knows what the players need to have. Uh, and a lot of the individual improvements and also like I say people retraining moving positions that's been down to Arteta as well and the work that he does on the training ground because he's very hands-on you know Guardiola has got all the ideas and you know is hands-on but he can't do everything and um, that's where Mikel Arteta has been very useful he's been very hands-on in training and as we probably saw in that company testimonial he's still a good player himself he can join in in the training and actually show the people what he wants them to do. Now we can all talk about the successes that Arteta has had offensively, but it's defensively where he faces one of his biggest challenges at Arsenal. Turning around a defence which is leaking goals like no other. In fact, uh, Burton Leno has got the most saves of any keeper in the Premier League and that goes to show how leaky this defence is. So whilst offensively Mikel may be well looked after in terms of what he can do going forwards, but actually at the other end of the pitch, what type of influence can he have on turning things around? So in terms of the Arsenal defence, which you know isn't great and you know the midfield isn't great either, that's kind of what Guardiola's been saying about City's problems this season. You know, what a lot of coaches say, you know, conceding chances and counter-attacks, you know, that's not a defence thing. The defence has to be good to deal with that. But if you can, you know, bolster the midfield or the pressing from the front, then you're gonna help your defence. Defending from the front, you know, it it's not just scoring goals, it's everything, you know, it's it's pressing, it's boxing teams in, it's making them kick the ball out of play and it's making them not not keep hold of the ball and that, that's been one of City's problems this season a lot of people talk about the defence but you know the pressing unit isn't working the midfield hasn't been quite right um, it's not just about the defence and I think that is what Arteta will be able to do he will be able to go in you know turn it into a more pressing unit you know I wouldn't be surprised if Mesut Ozil wasn't part of it kind of like he wasn't under Unai Emery I don't think the work rate's going to be there but I think there's enough young players talented players and even mid midfield with if you look at Guendouzi and Torreira I think very good players I think Arteta will be able to get a lot out of them I think there'll be a lot of work done with the midfield and forwards to protect that defence and as I say before he's actually worked hands-on with defenders as well to improve them and teach them where they need to position you know where they how they need to jump you know the, the passes they need to make so I think he's going to make the whole unit stronger and that will improve the defence. And finally, the all-important prediction. Sam, I know this is a biggie, uh, and it's probably not one that you can answer uh, with too much clarity, but I'm interested to know what your final thoughts are regarding a prediction to how you think this might turn out. It's impossible to know how it's actually going to go, of course. Uh, it could be a disaster. It could be great. Um, I think it's fair to say, and this example is a good one, although it may not sound too promising for Arsenal fans, but if you look at Vincent Company going to Anderlecht, you know, he hasn't done much coaching at all, but he's gone over there and he's instilled a playing style on a team that isn't used to playing it and on a team that's very young. You know, they're basically all 19, 20 years old. They're very young kids. They do play that company style, which Company basically got from Guardiola. They're not getting the results, but the style is there. And I think with Arsenal, because there's a lot of good players there already, there's a lot of good young players. I think with Arteta being you know, more of an advanced coach than company, he's going to be able to instill that playing style in Arsenal over the, you know, maybe quite gradually over the next six months, but then after a transfer window in the summer, particularly, and then going into next season, I can see the team looking like an Arteta team. I can see it being a good unit. I can see it playing good football. Uh, and overall, I think 
I think it'll be a success. I think he'll get them back challenging for the top four. You know, whether they're going to win the Premier League or not, I don't know. I'm not sure if the money's there or even if you know the the coaching is going to be that good to bridge the gap to City if they get it back to Liverpool. But you know, if Liverpool find it hard to stay at the top, as City have done, which is a natural unless you shake things up, there's going to be you know, a lot to play for. We've seen with Spurs, we've seen with Chelsea going through different times, uh, Manchester United in particular. There's definitely an opportunity for Arsenal within the next 18 months, even if not in this season, if it goes particularly well, to get back in that top four and start challenging the trophies again. And to be honest, if I had to make a prediction, it would be that Arteta will do a good job at Arsenal and yeah, get the top, top four back on the table at least. A huge thank you to Sam. You can find him on Twitter. I mean, of all of our guests, Sam probably has the easiest Twitter handle to find. It's just simply at Sam Lee on Twitter. And you can find his stuff over at The Athletic. I'll leave a link to that in the description below. But please, a uh, big thank you again to Sam for giving us all the insight regarding Arteta. I've certainly learned a lot more. I personally didn't know the work that he's done with some of those defenders, the likes of Zinchenko, uh, for instance. And that could be really invaluable considering that when Arsenal faced Everton this afternoon, which is being recorded this morning, the day of the match, we have sort of a fullback issue and maybe moving forwards whilst Kalasnach and Tierney face fitness struggles, we may have to deputise other players that aren't so comfortable and maybe Mikel can have a really good impact on trying to bed those players in. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please drop the video a like and subscribe to make sure that you can tune in to our live reaction show a little bit later to the Everton game. If you're watching a little bit later than that, thank you ever so much for tuning in and watching and you can subscribe to get all of our content ahead of those games that Mikel Arteta will be taking charge of. See you again very, very soon and as always, up the Arsenal.